in today's show, the skipper's long road to recovery and searching for more success. The AFLW squad's short break is over. Hi, I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you by the new Jack's Fried Chicken Cheesy Bacon at Hungry Jack's. Today we're giving you a unique view of Adelaide Oval from the coach's box. They're the best seats in the house. Now, when Rory Sloan ruptured his ACL two months ago, he vowed to return to the AFL next year. He embarked on a prolonged and gruelling rehab, but also embraced a new off-field role. At the same time, he took the opportunity to launch his secret project, Share and Face Footies. This is not good for Rory Sloan. Uh, that was a big marking contest that he's involved with Boston, I reckon. I'm about six and a half, seven weeks into my rehab. Uh, I've been able to do some really solid core work, I suppose hip, glute, quad strength, hammy strength, real baseline stuff to really get me going. Yeah, body's actually feeling really good. I can now, a bit more mobile for the kids, which has been, been nice as well. For me, it's finding those little wins. I've, I've been around home a fair bit, especially in those early periods. And I mean, this sort of period of time where my kids are out in life, it's, it's been pretty special to spend some time with them. The most challenging thing is definitely not playing footy, obviously. Um, watching footy, I'm, I'm pretty horrible at can get a little grumpy sometimes on the couch, uh, especially with those early games when I had no control over anything and couldn't sit on the bench. The role on the bench, probably a bit more for me, to be honest. I mean, it definitely fills that gap of that competitive part of footy that I miss. And I, I still feel like I'm involved, but hopefully I'm passing on a bit of my experience and knowledge of what I'm picking up on game day. And for a couple of boys to bounce some ideas off, I can also hear what the coaches are talking about upstairs and, and what they're seeing, so I can relay some messages pretty quickly. I'm James Poziadli, and we're here to talk about face footies, the newest way to teach kids and people new to the game how to kick a footy. Well, it's sort of a technique I've used for a while with coaching kids how to kick a footy. Um, so the technique has been, so you've got to cover the ears, um, you've got to point the nose at your target, and then the most important bit, you've got to kick the chin to make it spin, and that's what gives it the drop punt. So yeah, Pods heard me talk about it one day, he picked up on it, and all of a sudden he picks up the phone and goes, mate, we've got to put this idea on a footy. Like, this needs to be on a footy, it makes it so simple for me to, to teach kids at AFL Max. I'm like, all right, well, let's, let's have a go at it. And so we teamed up with Sharon. Um, Sharon obviously been an unbelievable football brand over many years, and together we all came up with uh, what you see right now, which is a fun little face. This is actually Rocket. We've given them all names, and this guy's Rocket, so he's superpowers. You can kick him to the moon, really, if you want to. You've got to look for simple things, how to teach your kids how to do stuff, and I've certainly found with this, this Sonny loves his footy, and now he, he can reel off the three steps um, very, very quickly Anytime you ask him how to kick a footy. I've loved my time in football, and if this can help kids stay involved in footy and, and not ditch it for a round ball or something else, then we've done our job. Great to see Rory still having a big impact around the club. Stay with us. Shortly, we'll relive one of Paul Seedman's magic moments. Going all the way! two months after the Crows third women's premiership the squad returned to training yesterday in preparation for the new look competition beginning in August. The addition of four new teams next season means that all 18 clubs are now represented in the AFLW. Of course there has been some player movement but the return of the majority of the Crows list reflects the strong team culture under coach Matthew Clark. I spoke to the girls before training the other night and basically we were thanking them for staying loyal and, and staying with our club. Every single player that's here could have got more elsewhere, but they want to stay together because uh, culturally it's a, a great group to be around and, and they're pretty good footy players. So no, it's been terrific. You know, we, we've set up a good, strong culture that people like being a part of. The 
we're supportive of the timing of the season that the AFL have come up with. We think that's a better time you know, for the competition in general. Might not be perfect for us today, but you know, one of the obvious things that happened to us was, OK, well, if they're going to start the season in August and we're going to be training in June, July, how are we going to train because we've got no lights? So, look, that has been a challenge. Uh, we're, we're the first sort of six weeks we'll train at We'll be training at Karen Rolton Oval, training at AFL Max on Wednesdays, and we'll be training here uh, on a Saturday morning, so we've got some daylight. So the, the club's working hard to get a solution. Ward straight off the bench, straight into the action. That was great defence there from the Eagles. Amber Ward uh, is a local girl from North Adelaide. In fact, her family's in the Crows supporter group, so it's a great story. She's played as a key back for West Coast. We also think she can play key forward as well. She's got an excellent kick. Chance here, Neve Kelly, open goal, and West Coast get one. And Neve Kelly, Neve's got outstanding speed, which our coach loves, but she's got great courage as well. So uh, I think our supporters will really like Neve as a player. She's going to be exciting to watch. Always the goal to win premierships, I mean, and I suppose one of the things with our, you know, our girls have been terrific and as we know they've won three premierships out of six years, but what we haven't ever been able to achieve is back to back. We've never been able to back it up, win it one year and win it the next, so you know, that'll be a driving force to try and win, but unfortunately before you start winning premierships you've got to make the finals, so our first goal is to try and win six games which will be enough to make the finals. Now, every week on the show, Tom Duday helps us relive a favourite Crows memory through the eyes of a teammate. We call them Whopper Moments. And this time, Riley O'Brien remembers fondly an absolute beauty. All right, time for another Crows Whopper Moment presented by Hungry Jacks, joined by Uncle Birdo. How are you, mate? Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thank you, mate. It's very good to see you. Um, let's get straight into it, mate. Talk us through your Whopper Moment. Well, my Whopper Moment is a torpedo from Paul Seisman uh, at the SCG. And he's uh, kicked it from near the junction for about 65 metres and Paul's my favourite player so I just, I just loved it. Barrel. Going, going, going all! Going all the way! What a way to finish the opening turn! It was a, uh, it was a whopping kick, I remember, because it was on the far side, the right, right footer, it was sort of odds against him, mm. and um, I remember being in the back line, sort of had an okay angle at it, and it was bizarre how well he hit it, mm. and it just kept rolling. Um, have you ever kicked a torp like that in mm. game? Believe it or not, I'm yet to kick a torp like that in game, but I've been practicing, so Paul's been teaching me, and Billy Frampton's been teaching me, so... What about um, if you in. ever took a kick out late in the game, would you go for a barrel up the ground? Definitely go up in the guts. Probably to go for a run, maybe take a bounce, then barrel it, I reckon. And finally, if you took a mark, 65, 70 out, Cedo's sort of position on the boundary, mm. are you going for the barrel or are you just going the drop punt and mm. hope that you don't spray it out on the full? Well, if the siren hasn't gone, I'm looking for Paul for a handball. Um, if it has, I'm... Mm. I'm probably having a crack, but it's probably not coming off. <laughs> it's definitely going out on the floor, <laughs> Potentially, but we'll take that. That was a good one, mate. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Tom. Every time you attend an Adelaide Crows home game, you could score a free Whopper from Hungry Jacks. Simply download the Hungry Jacks app for your chance to win. After the break, we'll take you to a place of the club that's favoured by most players. And it's not the lunchroom. I really enjoyed working in the gym, particularly the weights. But it's fair to say today's programs are far more sophisticated, science-based and tailored to specific players. So with the help of Dr Jones and partners, let's get a clearer picture of what happens when the heat is on. So obviously in season the games on this Friday, Saturday, Sunday typically, so we tend to try and front load as much our work in the week, whereas in pre-season the training volumes are so high on the field, we might try and do a lot of our work towards the tail end of the week when we've got most time to adapt afterwards, so where the big training stimulus comes normally determines what that looks like. 
So Monday we'll tend to do a, um, a reset and get the game out of our body. So we'll do some injury prevention work, little bits and pieces like that. Tuesday is typically a power plyo and upper body session. Wednesday is our main big rock training day where we hit our compound lifts and our injury prevention. And then there's normally like a Friday session, depending on where the game is, where we might get a bit of extra work on and volume into the boys. We probably tend to look at more what the players' needs are than the specific position as such. Um, it's quite a general game. You've got guys like Dorse who play up or back, and it's less position specific. We more look at what Dorse might need himself as a player. Technique's massive for us. You know, we've got a young list. We've got a lot of guys who haven't lifted a huge amount beforehand. So, um, we're very much a case of doing our lifts well and lifting technically well before we just crank loads of weight on there. Gives us like a bit of life and makes our training journey a little bit longer, and guys can develop as they go on. But we're huge on technique and form here injury prevention, keeping guys safe, and also setting them off on a good standard early doors. We have three or four different training themes that might go across the week in terms of you might need more strength work, you might need more power, more muscle mass. Um, so like everyone's got work-ons, but what those work-ons might look slightly different depending on the player, their age, experience, their level of play, etc. Ben Davis shifts a lot of tin, like he's one of our stronger sort of trap bar lifters. Um, Sam Berry's a strong fella as well, and you see a lot of that in his contest work on the field and stuff. You see that translate to the game. Some of our bigger fellas up top, like guys like you know, Riley O'Brien, uh, Billy Frampton, Tex, Darcy Fogg, they're quite good in their upper body work. Yeah, we've got a few strong fellas to be fair. Yeah, they'd be our standouts, I think. One bloke who still works out often is Sam Jacobs. You can catch Sauce and Tomo in the Crows Radio Show every Sunday morning at 9 on Triple M. Be there for some of our biggest matchups this season and save on ticket pricing. Our flexible three game membership gets you tickets to three games of your choice for only $35 per game. Head to crowsmembership.com.au for all the details and join the Crows family today. Now, Toyota has been a major partner of the Adelaide Crows for over 30 years. To celebrate, the club brought together some past players and Toyota vehicles to relive memorable moments in the following television commercial that launched this week. A sponsorship arrangement which will put the Crows a financial step ahead of the Creating iconic memories from the very beginning. The Adelaide Crows and Toyota, driving towards the future. It was a wonderful night, filming with some of my old teammates. And we all agree, it's hard to imagine the Adelaide Crows without its long-standing partnership with Toyota. Let's go behind the scenes and take a look at the making of this special production. tonight we almost wanted to film a little history piece and, and give a bit of a time lapse of our sponsorship with Toyota, where it started from and, and where it's at now. Great sitting alongside some of the greats of the club and knowing that that partnership has been around for so long and, and being involved in that is pretty special. Well, I'm surprised that we got invited back given the deterioration of the heads over well, the 30 years. And to see the age of the car <laughs> that we've just been sitting. It's aged a lot better than we have. It has. Yes. It, look, it's a bit of a flashback, isn't it? I remember at the time thinking it was, you know, a cracking mm. model and it was new and innovative for the time and it was a new shape. Shows how time flies, you know, it seems like um, not that long ago we were, the club was being formed and then we were just retiring and now we're has-beens, mate. <laughs> now that car actually looks new compared to my first one. Well, my first car was a 1974 Toyota Corolla. <laughs> So uh, sitting in that uh, early model Camry was, uh, was quite spacious and luxurious compared <laughs> to my first car. The company claims with its backing, the Adelaide Crows will be the most exposed side in the AFL. Toyota were enormous. I mean, it was such a, a, a big brand that put their support behind the, the Adelaide Footy Club and provided a real bit of, almost like a bit of Hollywood and a bit of glitz and glamour and have a big, strong brand behind us. Just gave, I think it gave the club and the team and the players and the fans a real lot of uh, confidence that um, this was a really serious footy club. To this very day, uh, I mean, Toyota have been amazing to stick with our club for as long as they have. They've been phenomenal. Well, we've seen the Crows Sandful team enjoy some good wins this season, and shortly we'll catch up with coach Mick Godden.
The Sandful competition provides valuable experience to Crows draftees and those vying for AFL selection. We're just over halfway through the season, so with the help of Bendigo Bank, let's check in on how the team is progressing. Season 2022 underway, Port Adelaide and the Adelaide Crows. Go towards the attacking 50, Sharrod there, out the back, the mark taken and the goal kick from the Crows. Is he going to give it off to a teammate, he'll kick it long down to the goal square. McAdam! <laughs> McAdam with the fly, McAdam with the goal! Yeah, our performances so far have, have been really strong. Obviously, coming off the back of last year when we didn't win too many games, you know, this year to get in the winner's circle is nice, so that certainly helps the individual develop much quicker, and we've seen that from a selection perspective. Really strong finish for the Crows. The games that stand out would be early in the season we played Glenelg, uh, played a really good three quarters. Unfortunately, in the third quarter, Glenelg were able to kick a, about 10 goals and put us on the back foot. But, you know, it's like every game that we play, we learn from it. And, you know, that was a great opportunity to learn. And then a few weeks ago when we played the Eagles, uh, that was a Friday night game. Under lights was was great game, great atmosphere. And, uh, you know, even though we had a couple of really strong performances from two AFL players in, in Matty Crouch and Ollie O'Brien, the rest of the group played well. And it was, a, it was a good brand of footy, good contest, and it was a good win. Swinging back. Coming on the breeze and he's kicked the goal. Consistent contributors has been hard because there's a lot of players that have played well and then gone up. So early on in the season it was you know, Jackson Haightley, you know, Sam Berry and now they're really good contributors at AFL level which is exciting. Karen Strawn in the ruck, obviously he's played a couple of AFL games which has been a great reward for his efforts but he's been probably our most consistent. The work on for us is consistency of effort. And when you are inexperienced like we are, it's, it's really important that you turn up every week. The early wins have given us a chance now to look, potentially we could play finals and any finals is a good final for a, an up and coming group. So if they get an opportunity to play at that level, it's, you know, it's not AFL, but it's as close as we can replicate. So it's important that we, we keep pushing to give them that chance. Now's the time to find our crow in the crowd. A reminder that when you take a photo of yourself or a friend at one of our games and post it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyersOne. So many to choose from each week, why don't we settle on you? Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill here at Adelaide Oval. Now, this is right where Matthew Nix sits on game day, accompanied by assistants and analysts. Each week, thanks to Flight Centre, Nixie answers a fan's question. This time, Mark from Adelaide wants to know how far away is Tariq Newchurch from making his AFL debut? Um, Mark, great question about Tariq. We're, uh, we're really enjoying his development. He's shown now that he's uh, well and truly at the SNFL level and he's starting to push for AFL selection. We believe that his attributes, which is elite speed, um, very good finisher in front of goal. We think that'll put him in a good position. That just about wraps up our show for today. Don't forget to keep an eye on At The Crow Show on Twitter for all the latest news and check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company and I look forward to joining you again next Sunday at midday. That's before the Kangaroos game on 7. Bye for now.